but let's look at a real life example. We'll go back to Cork Express and I'll close um, that example and let's look at our Boat International cover. So this example is a magazine cover and this is using a pretty common technique that a lot of magazine publishers use to do their covers. And basically what's going on here is you have an image that has um, some sort of foreground object. In this case, it's our mountain range and our clouds, but often you'll see it's a, a model, you know, a person's face, something like that. And we want to compose it over some page element. In this case, it's a uh, the logo of the magazine where it says Boat International. That's an EPS file. And you want to take that layout object and sort of interleave it between two layers of um, your image, in this case our mountain range. So if we start deconstructing this on the layers palette to see how this was built, it might make some more sense. So as you can see here, we have four layers, and I'm going to turn off all but the bottom layer. You'll see that what we have here is just a regular instance of our um, image of our boat. And on top of that, we have the logo of the magazine name. Now, this is a cropped version. If I select it with the picture content tool, you can actually see it says Boat International, but I have part of that cropped out. Um, and we also have a Cork Express drop shadow applied to that EPS file. So you'll see that drop shadow there in the background. If we go to the measurements palette, we can see it's using a drop shadow. Now, on top of this, we have another instance of the uh, main image, but this instance of the image is masked with uh, an alpha channel called foreground. So that could be our PSD transparency, um, however you know we achieve that transparent look. That might be a PSD layer that I created in Photoshop and then accessed in Cork Express on the PSD import palette. Uh, or it might be an alpha mask or whatever. In this case, we have a ma an alpha mask. So what that layer is doing is composing a portion of the image over our um, logo. If I move it out of the way, you can see that it doesn't have the whole image. It just has the portions of the image that exist in the foreground. And then the last layer is our, our very top layer, which contains some opaque elements such as text, um, in this case a rule all the way around. We have the bottom portion of our logo here, the international part of Boat International, and that one also has a Cork Express drop shadow um, applied to it. So we have a couple different instances of transparency going on here. We have a masked image with an EPS under it, uh, and then we have um, a couple of drop shadows applied in Cork Express. Now, in the past, when you export this as PDF, you click on the Options button, go into the PDF Export Options dialog, you know we have a Transparency tab in here. Um, Traditionally, you would output this as flattened transparency. That was the only way that we could output transparency in versions uh, Cork Express 7 through um, 8.02. And of course, there are some options in here for how to go about flattening that transparency. You can set the resolution of objects that have to be rasterized and things like that. The new option in 8.1 is export transparency natively. When you select this option, we're going to bypass flattening entirely and we're going to create a PDF file that has objects that are natively transparent. This option is only available when you're going out to the PDF format and a version that supports native transparency. So you're not going to see this option in the print dialog uh, transparency tab or in the export uh, as EPS dialog because both uh, in those cases the target is pure postscript which does not support native transparency. Also um, we only support native transparency uh, in composite output, so we do not do it in uh, separated output, so you do have to be using a composite um, output model. And also, we don't allow native transparency export if you're using a uh, certified PDF version that doesn't support transparency, such as PDF X1A. If I go up to the verification menu and I set it to PDF X1A, you'll see that export transparency natively becomes disabled um, and unchecked and it goes to flatten. That's because 
uh, 1A does not support native transparency, therefore we're not going to allow it here. So verification in this case has to be set to none, and then I can select export transparency natively. So let's go ahead and look at uh, the differences in output on this file between flattening and transparent. We'll close our little red pepper file. Now we have the same thing um, here. On the left we've got the flattened output and on the right we have the native output. And again initially they look to be the same, pretty much identical. Um, and they would print pretty much identically in this case. Uh, there are a few issues though with the flattened version. So let's take a look at just that uh, version real quick. A couple things you'll notice in here. One is sometimes there are artifacts of the flattening process, particularly when you're viewing your, your PDF output file in Acrobat or any PDF renderer that applies smoothing or anti-aliasing. In this case, over here on the right-hand side, you can see that there's a little white line at the end of that Boat International logo. Now, that is an anti-aliasing artifact of Acrobat drawing to screen. That white line would not show up on physical printed output you know, to a printing device. But nonetheless, it's a little disconcerting that it happens um, when you try to soft proof it on screen. Now, I know that that's an artifact and it's not going to cause a problem for a few different reasons. One is, if I start to zoom in on that line, you'll notice that it never gets any bigger. In fact, sometimes it goes away. Uh, we can see it here. I don't know, this is about 150% uh, view. As I zoom in, sometimes it'll go away. At this view, it's not even displayed at all. And then I zoom again, and it will eventually come back. Um, if I zoom all the way into, you know, 6400%, you'll see that it never gets any bigger than one monitor pixel. Um, that is a dead giveaway that that is a rendering artifact of drawing it to screen. Another thing that you can do to deal with that artifact in flattened output or at least make sure that it is just an artifact, is go into the preferences of whatever uh, PDF um, display application you're using and turn off smoothing. So in this case, I'm just going to go in and disable uh, smooth line art. When I click OK, it'll recompose that page and that line will no longer be there. Um, of course, you'll also have more jaggy looking uh, paths overall, um, but that little flattening artifact will go away. So that's one issue of flattening. Another issue is um, in Cork Express, we have to rasterize any EPS or PDF file that falls within a flattenable area. Now, in the past, we would let you define the resolution that that asset would be rasterized at so it should print okay but nonetheless we have a lot of customers who just don't want it to be rasterized and that's a completely valid request I mean again deferred rendering so you shouldn't um, rasterize these uh, pieces right when you output the file um, if you can do it later on in the workflow so in this case if I zoom in to that O you can see that you know at very high magnifications you're beginning to see the the jaggy uh, edge quality of this EPS logo. And uh, we don't like that. 